Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. To make advanced changes to an image, you can use the Format Picture dialog box to control every aspect of your clip art in minute detail. You can access this dialog box by clicking the Format Picture Shape button in the lower right corner of the Picture Styles group on the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab. Remember that we must have the clip art or picture selected in order for the Format tab to appear. The options that you can change are grouped by category. You can see the categories shown in a list at the left side of this box. To use a dialog box, you select a category from the left side and then make any changes to the available settings in the category at the right side. Once you have finished making your changes, you can then click the Close button to close a dialog box. Unlike many other dialog boxes, the changes that you make here are applied immediately as they are set, so you may need to use the Reset Picture button to reset your images after experimenting with the settings in this box if you do not like them. This lesson will examine the settings that we can change in each category. First, let's examine the various categories and what can be changed in each. The categories that you can select are Fill, Line Color, Line Style, Shadow, 3D Format, 3D Rotation, Picture, and Text Box. The first thing that you should note is that some of the options may not be available for the type of object you have selected. For example, the Picture category is only available when you have an actual picture selected. You can click the Fill category in order to change settings that affect the appearance of the inside fill of some types of clip art. For this to be used effectively with images, the selected image must contain a transparent section. If the image is already completely filled with its own content, then changing these settings would produce no visible effect. However, if your selected image contains a transparent background, then you can use the settings in the Fill section to format the background area within the image. You can select the No Fill option to remove any fill effect. You can select the Solid Fill option to fill the background of the image with the color of your choosing. Use the Color drop-down to select the desired color. You can then use the Transparency slider to set the level of transparency that you would like to apply to the background fill. You can select the Gradient Fill option to fill the background of the image with a multicolor gradient. A gradient is simply a color that transitions in hue and or transparency from one angle to another. You can choose from one of the preset gradients available by simply making a selection from the Preset Colors drop-down. If you want to make your own custom gradient, then you can use the additional buttons and sliders to customize it. You can use the Type drop-down to select the type of gradient you want to use. Linear, which changes colors from one side to another across a straight line. Radial, which changes colors starting from an origin point and then radiates outwards in a circular pattern. Rectangular, which changes colors starting from an origin point and then radiates outwards in a rectangular pattern. Or Path, which follows the path of a line that you draw. Once you have selected the type of gradient, that you can use, you can select the specific variation you would like to use from the Direction drop-down. If you selected a linear gradient type, then you may select the angle at which the gradient changes by entering the desired angle in degrees into the Angle Spinner box. The Gradient Stop section allows you to set the number and appearance of changing points in the gradient's color scheme. At its most basic level, a gradient must have at least two gradient stops. You can have more if desired. Use the Gradient Stops drop-down to select the gradient stop whose properties you wish to set. Then use the Stop Position slider to set the position at which you want the gradient stop to be placed within the gradient. You can then use the Color drop-down to set what color you want the gradient to be at that specific stop position. You can also use the Transparency slider to set the level of transparency for that stop. If you wish to remove a gradient stop, select the gradient stop that you wish to delete, and then click the Remove button. 
You can also add more gradient stops by clicking the Add button. The additional stops will simply be numbered and added to the Gradient Stops drop-down. You can then select them and make any changes to their settings. At the bottom of this tab, you can check the Rotate with Shape checkbox in order to set the gradient fill to rotate with the image if the image is rotated. You can also select as a fill option the Picture or Texture Fill. Textures are simply images that are included in Word. To apply one of the preset textures, you can select your choice from the texture drop-down. If you want to use a picture located on your computer, you can select one from your computer clicking the File button, and this will open up the Insert Picture dialog box. Or if you have an image copied to your clipboard, you can click the Clipboard button. This will paste the contents of your clipboard into the background of the image. If you want to insert another piece of clip art into the background, you can click the Clip Art button. You can then use this dialog box to search for clip art to insert into the background. You can change the background image's offset settings in the Stretch Options section. Use the left, right, top, and bottom spinner boxes to input the percentage by which the image should be offset from the selected side. If you want to tile or repeat the texture, then make sure that this checkbox is checked. Then, in the Tiling Options section, you can set the Offset X and Offset Y options to set the amount of horizontal and vertical offset to apply to the background image. You can also use the Scale X and Scale Y spinner boxes to set the percentage of the image to display in the tiled background. You can also use the Alignment drop-down to set the alignment of the texture within the main image. You can also use the mirror type drop-down to select the type of reflection to apply to the tiled image. Finally, you can set the amount of transparency to apply to the background fill by using the transparency slider. Also, if you want the background to rotate with the image if the main image is rotated, then check the Rotate with Shape checkbox. The next category is Lion Color. As applied to images, these attributes set the color of the picture's border. The three options shown are No Line, Solid Line, and Gradient Line. If you do not want to have a line, or wish to remove a line that has been applied, select the No Line option. If you wish to apply a solid line, select the Solid Line option. Notice that when you do this, additional settings become available. First. Select a color for the line border from the color drop-down. If the colors shown aren't quite what you need, notice that you can select the More Colors command. This will open up the Colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you desire. This dialog box is available in almost all of the places where you can choose a color in Word. You can click the Standard tab and choose a color, or you can click the Custom tab and choose a color from the different color choices here. Note that at the bottom of both tabs you can set the transparency for whichever color you choose. Once you have made your selection, click the OK button. If you want to apply a gradient line, select the gradient line option in order to view a different set of options in the line color area. You can apply a gradient to a border in the same way that you can apply a gradient to a fill so these options should be familiar to you as we just covered them in the Fill section. You can click the Line Style category in order to make changes to any line, or in this case picture border, that can change its thickness and appearance. Use the Width Spinner box to set the width of the line. If you want to have a multi-line border, use the Compound Type drop-down to select the style of multi-line appearance you want to use. You can use the Dash Type drop-down to select the style of line that you want to apply if you would prefer a dashed border. The Cap Type drop-down allows you to change the appearance of the ends of lines. This isn't often used in applying picture borders, however the Join Type is. The Join Type drop-down allows you to set the appearance of the junction points where two lines meet. Also note that if working with arrows, which Word considers a type of line, you can set their appearance in the Arrow Settings section. 
This would not be the case with picture borders, however, and that is why it is grayed out for our example. You can click the Shadow category at the left side of the dialog box to view the settings at the right that allow you to apply a shadow to your selected image. You can apply one of the pre-created shadow styles by selecting one from the Presets drop-down. If you want to customize your shadow's appearance, then start by choosing a shadow color from the color drop-down. You can then set the transparency of the shadow by using the transparency slider. You can set the size of the shadow by selecting a percentage from the size slider. You can use the Blur slider to set the amount of blurring applied to the edge of the shadow. You can angle the shadow by entering the desired angle into the Angle text box, or by moving the slider to the desired setting. You can control the amount of vertical offset that is applied by using the Distance slider. If you want to apply a 3D effect to the selected image, you can start by clicking the 3D Format category. In the Bevel section, you can use the top and bottom drop-down buttons to select a style and thickness of beveling to apply. You can also enter values into the Height and Width spinner boxes. In the Depth section, you can use the Color drop-down to select a coloring for the beveling depth. You can also set the amount of coloring applied to the beveling depth by using the spinner boxes. Likewise, in the Contour section, you can use the Color drop-down to select a color for the contour of the bevel. You can then set the size of the contour by entering the size of the contour into the size spinner box. In the Surface section, you can apply settings that change the appearance of the material and lighting used in the 3D setting. Use the Material drop-down to select the type of material that the 3D effect should emulate. Then use the Lighting drop-down to select the intensity and style of lighting to apply. You can then use the Angle Spinner box to set the angle of the lighting if desired. You can rotate the image in 3D space by changing the settings that appear in the 3D Rotation category. When you select this category, you can easily apply a 3D rotation by selecting one from the Presets drop-down. If you wish to apply your own custom rotation, then you can use the buttons and sliders in the Rotation section to accomplish that. You can enter a rotation angle for the X, Y, and Z coordinates by using the spinner boxes or by clicking the adjacent buttons. If you selected a perspective style from the Presets drop-down, then you will be able to enter an angle into the perspective spinner box. If you are applying a 3D rotation to a text box, then you will be able to keep the text appearing flat by checking the Keep Text Flat checkbox. This does not apply to pictures, however, and that is why in our example it is grayed out. You can use a distance from the ground spinner box to set the amount of space the selected object will appear to be from the ground. You can click the Picture category to make adjustments to the selected image. Note that unless you have an image selected, you will not be able to change any options to the right. Otherwise, you will see options at the right side of the Format Picture dialog box that will allow you to perform some of the basic image editing that you can also perform using the buttons available on the Format tab. You can use the Recolor drop-down to select a color to apply to the selected image. You can also use the Brightness and Contrast sliders to set the amount of brightness and contrast for the selected image. Once again, if you are unhappy with your changes, you can click the Reset button. In the Text Box category, you will see options at the right that you can use to make changes to selected text boxes. Since these options do not affect pictures, we will skip reviewing them for now. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www dot teachucomp dot com forward slash free.